Hello guys and welcome back to another video of Architects 3D Printing. In this week's project, we are gonna make the complete design of this modular system with six modules to organize all the tools that were messing around in our workshop. But before starting, make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel, clicking here in this little Architects 3DP icon that you can find in the bottom right corner. If you do it, you will help us grow in and continue creating new content for special viewers like you. Since my real workshop is in my house in Spain and I'm living in Germany for a short period of time, I only brought and bought the absolutely necessary tools. And the few tools that I have here are making a complete mess in my improvised workshop. That's why I need to design and print a useful device such as this one. I have uploaded the STL file of the six modules of the modular system and I'm also going to upload the 3DM file so you can use it to modify the modules and adapt it for your needs. To go to my Patreon page, you can navigate to patreon.com slash architects3dp or well, you can click in the link in the description. Okay, so let's get started with the project. The whole process will be divided in six steps that will be the next. Design and test a functional snap fit. Create the base modular system. Measure the tools and draw the final design in 2D. Transform it to the final design in 3D. Export in XDL, slice and print all the modules. Insert the tools in place, assemble and enjoy. The first we are going to do is to collect every single tool and put them together, trying to divide them by type or category. And after a few seconds, we divided everything in six categories. First, we'll have a couple of pliers, a couple cutters, some Allen keys, a set of screwdrivers for the drilling machine, a set of small screwdrivers and other small tools, and finally some drills, which are also divided in drills for metal, wood and stone. Okay, so now we're gonna switch to our computer and start designing. We're going to model everything in 3D using Rhino for Windows. If you don't have the software or you don't know how to use it, click in the top right corner or check out the links in the description since we have made a video explaining how to download and install it, as well as a series of Rhino tutorials for beginners. Okay, so once in Windows, we will open Rhino and we will start designing. When we start a design, we have to be aware of our hardware limitations. Our 3D printer has a maximum print volume of 181mm in the X axis and 200mm in the Y and Z axis. We could perfectly make a design that measures 250 by 300 by 300 but it will be adding more work to our workflow since we will have to divide it in pieces and basically adding more complexity where it's not needed. As a personal recommendation, I will tell you to only exceed the print volume in case it is absolutely necessary for the design. So once we know that, we are going to start drawing a square of 191 by 200 millimeters with the starting point in the origin. Making this design modular will give us the possibility to add more modules in the future if we need so. They will attach to each other with a snap fit in the bottom, what will make the modules more stable when they are attached to the whole structure. So to start, I'm going to design a 2x2 array, giving us 4 modules, and later I'm going to explain you why. These 4 modules now are the same, but we'll change them later. For now, this is the basic shape of the design. And now we are going to design the snap fit in between them. I'm going to go a little bit fast over the steps but if you really want a step-by-step -step guide of the whole design process, let me know in the comment section and I will upload a video for the specific part. Basically, we are going to draw the snap feed in 2D in the ground plane. In this step, make sure you let enough tolerances to work with your 3D printer. In our case, we let 0.4mm, what is enough for the accuracy of our machine. Once we have the basic design of the lines, we'll use the command trim to clean the drawing and then the command join to make it a couple of closed polylines. Then we'll extrude them 10 mm and finally we will use the command fillet edge to make the edges more smooth. Once we have the snap fit designed, we are going to export it in STL and print it out to check if our design is actually functional. We can copy the final part into the build plate we drawn before and then use the command export selected to export it in STL. Then we'll slice it in Cura and print it as usual. Once it's printed, we'll test if the device actually fits. And as you can see, having a closer look, it fits perfectly. So part one of the design, designing a functional snap fit is complete. So now that we have checked that our design works, we're going to copy the snap fit a few more times to connect the four modules with each other. 
both in the X and Y axis. What we're going to do now is to copy the two upper modules to the top with the fitting pieces. That's why we only put four modules before. We don't want to work for free designing it twice when we can just copy it. Now we'll use the commands trim and join to clean the drawings and at the end we'll have six closed polylines. And once it's done, we're going to copy them to the right hand side and separate them to finally organize our file cleaning up the canvas. At this point, we have finished the part two of the design that was to get the basic modular system. So now we are going to modify the six modules to each of the six categories of tools we divided at the beginning of the video. We're going to start with the X keys or Allen keys. The first step will be to measure them using our digital caliper. Here, one more time, we don't want to forget the tolerances, since if not, our tools won't fit in place. It is better to give them large tolerances than having to drill everything again later. So, once we go all the diameters, we'll add 0.4 mm to each of them. And now we are going to draw them in Rhino. As we have four Allen keys, what we are going to do is create a centered line inside the module and use the command divide to divide it in five portions. So we will use the ends of the segments to place the centers of the holes for the keys. And now we'll just create circles with the diameters plus tolerances that we just wrote down. Okay, so this is the process we have to follow in the other five modules. I'm gonna make a quick time lapse of the rest of the design since the process is pretty much the same. The only difference is in the long modules where we'll have to use the command move curve to make them longer. Nothing else to add, I will let you with the time lapse and I will catch you later. Rhino, we have just completed the part 3 of the project, creating the final design in 2D. Now it's time to turn this 2D design into 3D. And this process, despite it could sound like something very complicated, you can really do it in 30 seconds. First we are going to select the external perimeters of the module and we are going to extrude them minus 10 mm, so it will extrude the perimeters 10 mm to the bottom. Once they are in 3D, we'll use the command fillet edge to fillet some of the sharp edges of the object. And once it's done, we'll draw the six perimetrical rectangles in the top of each module that we will later use to extrude the top part. The height of every module will depend on the needs of each tool. For example, we are going to use 10 mm for the electric screwdriver heads, 15 mm for the manual screwdriver, 20 mm for the drill bits, 25 mm for the cutters, 30 for the Allen keys, and finally 55 mm for the pliers module. Once all of them are extruded, we're going to use one more time the command fillet edge to soft all the sharp edges in the design. This step is completely optional, but I recommend you to do it since it does not take much time and the result will be much better at the end. At this point, we have completed the part 4 of the project, that is, the 3D modeling of the design. Now the next step is to export the modules in STL, slice them in Cura and print them in our 3D printer. And after some hours of printing, a lot of hours, we have finally completed the part 5 of the project, having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 modules ready to go. Finally the last step will be inserting all the tools in place and we are gonna start inserting the two pairs of pliers, then the cutters, then the drilling bits, the manual screwdriver, the allen keys, and finally the electric screwdriver head. Now we are going to assemble the modular system from the back to the front. have to put our nice modular system in place and enjoy our tidy and clean 3D printer workspace. As you can see, we also have here the custom bowl where we put all the plastic waste inside, keeping everything nice and clean. If you want to design your own, you can watch the video clicking right here or while well in the links in the description. So that was everything for this quick project. 
to keep your workshop nice and clean. Thanks a lot for watching and if you enjoyed and learned with the video, please hit the like button, share the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel clicking right here in this little icon that they will find in the bottom right corner. To stay tuned with progress updates and future videos, you can follow us on social networks at architects3dp. Finally, if you want to support the channel, you can consider to support us on Patreon. From only $1 per month, what will make us extremely happy and will also give you nice rewards that you can check in our Patreon page navigating to patreon.com slash architects3dp or clicking in the link in the description. Okay, so as always, see you guys in the next video.